Uno tea time. I've worked with him back in the joint Dota days. But let's instead focus on this game. I mean right now there is a good there is a good initiation there is a good combination of doing physical damage and I freaking called it guys I wish I would I wish I don't know I'm still best analyst EU not even memeing right now I mean come on bloodseeker huge pick here it's perfect for Lorem Ipsum they got everything they need this time around the last time around it was BB trying to you know make a lot of things happen on the Bloodseeker and he had to do, do a lot of the heavy lifting himself. He managed to do it by killing up the Alchemist several times in a row. This time around, however, it seems way more way more solid of a pick because there's actually a lot of AoE damage. And Baba Yaga on the Lina here to have some synergy with the Terror Blade Slow, with the Shadow Demon. And I mean there's a lot of lockdown to keep the Lina away from harm and we're gonna play one quick ad for our sponsor expert here before we're gonna load in. Xbet, best odds for eSport and live betting. Unique gaming lines for all eSport disciplines including Dota and CSGO, Casino and live dealers. Highest payouts, 100% bonus on your first deposit. Okay, so we are in both teams going for the early smoke. And Lorem Ipsum now, my pro on the safe lane Monkey King there it seems. And once again, BB on the Bloodseeker mid lane. This time around there is a lot more synergy. And honestly, I wonder wha how Mongols plan to win this game. They can either take late game to the point where Terrorblade kinda man fights everyone, but then there's still the Monkey King ultimate, which is so hard to deal with, even for a big Terrorblade, even when he's kinda fat, even when he got, you know, Scotty and all that going on. The Monkey King is still a pick you need to respect, and Mongols, if they are able to get a lot of kills off that Lina, Lina pushing the tempo there and winning the lane against the Bloodseeker, that would be a really good start. Since the problem is Terrorblade kind of relies on being kept at uh, on being kept at range. He kind of relies on getting low health without getting nuked down. This is gonna be a very hard game for him. But Baba Yaga on the Lina with a lot of people to protect her, it's got it's gonna be in a far more comfortable position. Okay, and we are off to a somewhat quiet start compared to the last game, but the mid lane might escalate any second, especially with Earth Spirit roaming in there to get himself in gank position, but look at that. BB, this time around, actually taking a lot of harass from Baba Yaga on the Lina. Baba Yaga getting bullied away by M16 there, but... Or Solo Tick, actually. Don't burn your fingers. Solo Tick is his actual name, but um, Baba Yaga, he's doing fine. Holding his mid lane as steady as he can. The Shadow Demon is going to help dominate this lane here. 
YY might be dropping here. They are committing a lot to chasing him. Torrent almost on cooldown. Can he sidestep it? Looks like he will. With that, the Rubik is gonna live here. Now, Kuroro coming in. Putting a lot of damage on Proxy. Proxy trying to get out of there. Nice save there, but not gonna do enough. Just bought a little bit of time. Meanwhile, in the middle lane. Baba Yaga still holding his ground, though. This Lina off to a pretty good start. Harass wise, forced out a lot of region. Four people near the mid lane, but. Baba Yaga so far able to carefully navigate everything here. Earthshaker up against Monkey King on the top lane. That's definitely favorite for the Monkey King. I mean, he can just farm without supports perfectly fine against an Earthshaker. Earthshaker not really able to do a lot with the Jingu and Boundless Strike. Since all of a sudden Monkey King, even if you're a Rassim, really low health, he can heal up. So Earthshaker, he does need a couple of support rotations in. And this is the scenario where the Earthshaker nerf really comes into play. And Reggie taking a lot of damage. That's the bound to strike, and Rubik will secure the kill. So the top lane, uh, the top lane is going in favor of Team Lorem here. The bottom lane kind of neutral. I mean, Terrorblade is able to farm like a god, but the bot lane giving away their first blood is kind of, you know, a bit of a drawback. So this is gonna be one half interesting game. Chain stun now up onto BB here and. Good stun from M or good stun from Solotic actually saving the life there. Instead it's gonna be Reggie going down to Yeah, same lane, same scenario as the last time. It's always the kill you don't look at, but that's one kill that Mongols are really reluctant to give away because Earthshake's blink dagger timing is gonna be incredibly important. And YY on the Rubik, getting ran by two people with the damage amplification. They're gonna hit him like a truck, and down he goes. Finally a return kill for Mongol, a much needed one. I mean, Lina's still going fine, Terrorblade's still going fine. It's the Monkey King you need to shut down at this point, because Monkey King, if he gets ahead, he can, in teamfights, just dish out so much damage no. with the Jingu, with the Bound, the Strike, and all of a sudden, kill off one person who's sitting in the back lines and... Will be off to a really good start. Will be off to a really good start, and it looks like Baba Yaga is getting taken low health there, doing his best to just man up and fight till the bitter end. But it's gonna go down, and now Sanki gonna suffer the same fate. So all of a sudden, this good start at the mid lane is gonna get mitigated, and now it's only the Terror Blade against the world, at least temporarily, until the Lina, you know, manages to kind of come back in terms of farm, manages to kind of come back in terms of momentum swing, but that's gonna be a hard one now. Because you gotta play it carefully, you are afraid you are afraid of losing that momentum because Terrorblade is super slow. And it looks like Lina, see this is why Lina has got to be afraid. Ruptured up, taking a lot of damage. Maybe they can get a Rubik in return. They will get a Rubik in return. BB, however, is gonna get away to tell the tale. Solo tick went down to the Earthshaker. And meanwhile, Kuroro got killed off by Retribution on the Terror Blade. So, all together, across the board, slight actually a decent advantage for Mongols, but they need more than just that up against the free farming monkey king unless they get a gank on the monkey king here the seeds of fortune. if they do get a gank on the monkey king mongols might all of a sudden turn this game back around proxy now completely body blocked up and killed off as well
And Lorem Ipsum still in a really steady position. Terrorblade doing his best, doing everything he can pretty much. Getting in Aquilius online now. Mid lane, staying controlled up somewhat by Baba Yaga, but needs to make more than that happen. Let's take a look at the gold net worth here, and oh boy, that Monkey King is big as hell. I mean, I knew he had free farm and stuff, but he actually he actually has a way better time than Terrorblade right now, and that's gonna be dangerous because Terrorblade's really weak to Monkey King. Before the Terrorblade Ultimate Re makes sense, Monkey King can just bounce strike him down from really high health. And Baba Yaga almost getting a kill on BB there. Instead, ba instead Baba Yaga is going to be the one going down. Now Kuroro trying to get out of there will succeed. It looks like Reggie's still on the chase. But gets sprouted in and might actually get killed off as well. Sanki will go down. Return kill there on. Solo tick, but it's just solo tick. Baba Yaga much needed that kill, but still. I mean, the one good thing for Mongols is they're giving the Terrorblade a lot of farm and a lot of space. So, Retribution, he needs a lot of space to farm. It was, or actually it is, Baba Yaga. Baba Yaga's task to give him that space on the Lina, but it's gonna be it's gonna be super difficult, especially against this fed of Monkey King, who's great against Lina, who's great against Terrorblade, who's great at ganking people at exactly this stage of the game. And look at that, he finds Terrorblade, getting those Jingu stacks up, and he gets killed off by Kuroro there with the Nate's Prophet Ultimate. So, my pro got another kill on proxy. Meanwhile, BB is being gone, but BB is gonna live. Might actually be able to enable the uh, return kill here. Will not do so as the TP out from Shadow Demon there is gonna happen in time. He had an insta TP and. Lorem are off to a great start once again, but Mongols not out of it yet. Retribution doing whatever he can. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Okay, and it looks like we got a bit of fight going on. Sanki is just gonna go down here to Kuroro. And I mean, he can't sacrifice himself to allow his team to get away, but now with the rupture, Earthshaker isn't gonna get away for sure. Proxy might be able to live, but look at that. BB. A lot of move speed there, sidestepping the torrent perfectly, and Proxy now taking a lot of damage. They're just gonna keep chasing this Kunka with the racing car, Bloodseeker, Bloodseeker. Too fast to torrent. And now Lorem, they're just getting one big objective done after another, and Retribution, he does know what he's doing, he does know he needs to farm. He is gonna go for a Mask of Madness. Meanwhile, the mid lane is gonna... Okay, that's actually a huge kill for Reggie there. Wait, how much did he commit? Did he... Yeah, thought so. Had to use the Echo Slam there. Meanwhile, the mid lane... Everything seems to be going fine for now. So, we finally get a bit of breathing room. Isn't that nice? Finally, a couple of seconds without people dying. Terrorblade still farming up. He's got the Mask of Madness. Perfect item for fast farming. 
but I don't think a single item can be powerful enough to keep Mongols in the game in the game by that big of a margin. Also, chat, I really wish I would be living in the Middle Ages right now. That time back when salt was used as a currency because then this chat would be making me rich. Okay, Kuroro, gonna go down. That's a really big kill streak. Ended there and Retribution on the Terror Blade. Farming up insanely fast. The Radiant Courier did get killed off, but honestly right now all Mongols need is farm on the Terror Blade. That's what this entire game is about. How much farm can Terror Blade get? How much farm is this guy going to be able to take for himself? And I mean this Illu push threat seems to kind of work out. Meanwhile Proxy got killed up on the mid lane. Baba Yaga manages to get out. And the tier 2 is taking a whole lot of damage. They have to fortify here. So the, the Terror Blade threat it is working to some extent actually. Retribution, of course, he needs a lot of farm, but the ability to get a couple of return towers, you know, the fact that you almost push down a tier 2 tower, if they can get that and get a solid tower advantage running, then Lorem's gold advantage and their good start is going to be mitigatable. Still one problem, the 2 and 0 My Pro Monkey King. And that's a big problem, because ultimate is super powerful, but... Radiance top tower has fallen. Other than that, there's definitely some comeback potential. The Bloodseeker, he's in a decent spot, but... Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Bloodseeker really depends on the Monkey King ultimate, not the other way around. Okay, so Lorem BB on the Bloodseeker getting good farm. Monkey King going for the Saint Jasha build. Kuroro, somewhat decent start here. Not quite insanely fed yet. And meanwhile, Retribution, he's just doing his best to farm up. It's really gonna be up to him. He is sitting on top of the net worth, but not quite by the margin he'd like to. Lorem still a total of 3k ahead. Baba Yaga especially underwhelming on the Lina. I mean, he makes the right call there by going for the Eules, but even an Eules can only prevent so much damage from coming out into you. BB. Got taken low health, got prevented from fighting there, but still Baba Yaga gonna go down, Reggie gonna go down, and Sanki, even if he gets away, this was not quite the space create, this was not even enough space for Terror Blade. He needed a bit more there, and Fortification just being committed. Terror Blade, he wants this middle tower, he wants to kill there as well, but has to play it really carefully. He will get the middle tower, but if he goes down here, it could be devastating. Ship comes on in onto two, allowing Retribution to try and walk out of there. Retribution now about to turn, but he gets stun locked up. And see, remember what I told you guys about uh, about the Boundless Strike and why Monkey King was so dangerous? There you have it. Okay, wait. Echo Slam with the ancient with the ancient stack doing some work. That I completely missed that one as the blink deck just got revealed, but that's a good way of putting a blink to use even if you didn't have the best of starts. Reggie still managed to make it happen there and how he did. Monkey King Ultimate now coming out. Look at the damage that does within the first half second onto Sankey. Just imagine 
once that gets procced, when you have somebody locked down. So yeah, that kill on Bloodseek definitely worth the suicide for Earthshaker there. Retribution still kind of struggling to farm. BB at least shut down. He's gonna go for a Radiance this game around because now there actually is enough AoE damage to justify the Radiance. I keep explaining this every game. Radiance if you have AoE damage. No Radiance if you don't have any, you know, big AoE damage combos. But yeah, Bloodseek in general is just super popular, so... Okay, Roxy doing his best to live for as long as he can there. Gets magnetized down, still a nice return kill on Solitic there, especially because of who that kill then went to, so... This Terrorblade, he is eventually going to get there. But the problem is my pro. They've had a couple, I mean... They've had a couple of good Echo Slams on the side of Mongols, but they need to kill off this Monkey King. They do need to get a good initiation on him, kill him off and keep him down. That's the only way to get a good way of coming back into this game. Also, Earth Spirit Kick plus Rupture is not a whole lot of nuke damage compared to Pugna nukes. It's literally the same as the Nether Blast from Pugna connecting in terms of damage. What makes it so overpowered is that you give Bloodseeker reliable damage. You could. You could as well go any hero with nuke damage instead of the Earth Spirit. I mean, let's take for example, um, hmm, actually, do you could run a Puck instead of the Earth Spirit and you would still get the same effect out of it, so it's not the Earth Spirit who is overpowered. TNT on the Rubik now gonna go down. Reggie just getting that kill and. Mongols, they're doing their best to somehow stick in this game. I'm gonna do a general item check up here. So, BB, he wants to fight. He got his Radiance up. Makes his life against Terrorblade way easier. Kuroro going for the Orchid here. My pro, Saints and Josh are done, so his ultimates are gonna be bigger. Retribution got a Manta style. Baba Yaga got a Yules. If that Yules keeps the Lina alive and sets up some good ultimates, it could be really important, but. Not gonna be all that easy. And my pro, he finds another nice little gank on the Kunkka there. This guy's just so fat. He's gonna go for the early BKB, which is always a bit of a risk, but... The seeds of hope. There is a 4k lead for Lorem. Lorem, they also kind of got the late game advantage here by a slight margin, so they can take it quietly. They can continue pushing the net worth till everyone got buyback. Everyone's sitting at 3 to 5 items, and then they can choose to fight on their own terms if there's no good gank opportunity arising. Uh, they probably won't have to wait that long, but just in case. Okay, we're just gonna play the waiting game here while Lauren farm, while Lauren wait for the advance to kick in. Mm. 
a bit boring here, but at least we might get once there is a good initiation attempt. Okay, so much for a good initiation attempt. Thank you. He's trying to set one up, but look at that flank coming in from Solitic as well as TNT. They're gonna get a kill on the Earthshaker here. Meanwhile, my pro looking for a kill here as well on Sanki. And look at that Bounty Strike sniping the Reggie, sniping onto Reggie. Baba Yaga got one return, got one return card that would love a second one there, but the vision is just not there. And with that, this fight's just gonna be one sided once again. Kuga is gonna go down as well, and Retribution. He is ratting. He is doing his best to keep his team in the game with any means necessary, any means available to him. Now trying to just man fight up here, but in comes the Monkey King, and despite that awesome Manta dodge off the Bounty Strike there. You can't just have three months in a row. He would love to. A really skilled player when it comes to mental dodging shit as we just saw. But a single mental style isn't gonna do enough. Such mimicry. Okay, so Rose gonna get taken down here, and like I said, Lorem, they can be as patient as they feel like they need to be, and then all of a sudden completely run over their opponent's team, which seems to be what's currently underway. At this rate, it's going to be quite close to the end here, unless Terrorblade, of course, manages to turn around all of a sudden. But right now, my pro, 9-0 oh, and 8. We got a bit of a pause here from the side of Lorem. 9-0 oh, and freaking 8. We got to disconnect here, a bit of a break. Giving, giving me some breathing room. I'm just going to keep the items up for you guys to look at. Okay, so Baba Yaga trying to get that Bloodstone line, but not quite succeeding just yet. And okay, 1DC, yeah. Kind of awkward to unpause there without one of your teammates. Or Earth Spirit was like, go, we don't need the Monkey King player. I, we don't need my pro. I'm gonna micro the Monkey King from now on. I'm gonna be the new MVP of this team. Invisibility. Uproot and after them. Excellent. Okay, and Terrorblade still looking to find farm wherever he can. Gonna go for a BKB now, but I don't know if I compare that to the early Monkey King BKB, which still has 10 seconds on it. My pro, he's beyond god like at this stage. They I mean I said it for a long while. The Monkey King is the issue. You need to take down the Monkey King. If Monkey King doesn't die, then there is gonna be quite the struggle. And BB getting a kill there onto Proxy as Monkey King's damage was just slightly off the mark but Mongols, they've just lost all of their momentum 
at this point, it's going to be a pretty one-sided game unless, of course, Terrorblade can somehow find some opening for him to work with. Honestly, judging by his ratting playstyle, I would have loved to see Terrorblade get a Radiance. Radiance, it's one of those items on the Terrorblade. A lot of people don't build it anymore, just because they're not too fond of it. But it can be really powerful. And yes, guys, this is the last, this is the last best of three we got going on for today. The Europe Cup has ended. It's gonna start again in 10 days from now. So it's not like you guys are gonna get starved of your Dota for a very long time. Meanwhile, Kuroro getting a kill on Proxy there. Sanki gonna go down as well to BB. Kuroro might die to the Terror Blade. Okay, it's gonna go down, but Retribution needs so much more than one kill there. He's now gonna run at BB, but BB. Ruptured him up, and look at that. Terrorblade just dead. Radiant's bottom tower has fallen. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. And now we're gonna see that bottom tower get slow sieged up here. My pro gonna go for the Monkey King Ultimate. Didn't ever have to use before this. I mean, he used it a couple of times, but never really got that huge value. This was his chance, and he used it, and... I mean, there's not a lot of push on Lorem, but they don't need a lot of push because they can keep fighting nearly indefinitely. Look at that save there as well. Onto My Pro. My Pro now instead gonna go turn around. Triple kill, ultra kill. I would understand if he were to just base dive for Rampage. There's the Lina. Go get a Rampage, bro. Nah. I mean, I get that Mongols aren't surrendering here because if they have one good, if they have one good situation going on, one really good fight, one I don't know, it's gonna be a chain reaction kind of situation since it's not that easy anymore to come back. But oh, look at that, Sanki, gonna go down again. Nature's Prophet just gonna do Nature's Prophet things. Radiant's top shrine has fallen. Invisibility. And look at how far Mongols are going outside of their own base. They don't seem to understand. Either they don't know how severe the net worth difference is, which a lot of times when you're the player slot does happen, or they. Or they are trying to bait here, and yeah, with the smoke gang, it looks like they are trying to bait. Bloodseeker charging into four. Do they? They do have vision. Can they get him down though before his team responds? Good stun up, a decent deal of damage, but okay. Instead, they're gonna get solo tick here. My pro, if they get this guy, it would be huge. Terrorblade is just gonna get swatted down, however, to the Monkey King and. 60 seconds without the one big carry that could still keep Mongols in the game here. The Lina gonna die as well. The second biggest carry and... GG finally being called. I mean, Mongols, I do like their drafting style a lot, but the thing with Mongols is they either... It's really for them more of rock, paper, scissors right now. They have this really unique playstyle against mid against mid game oriented teams against synergy based teams it works really well against teams like Lorem Ipsum who love to run at people and get a lot of kills early on it's gonna be well nearly the exact opposite so this is not quite what you would expect here if you don't know these teams it's not quite as good of a game for Mongols I mean it's kinda how they do it's kinda how they operate Oh, we are up against a super aggressive opponent. No way we're gonna win, the, win this. Oh, we are up against an opponent which is actually giving us some space and time. Easy game, easy life. So, I do hope you guys enjoyed the show. I'm gonna put my Twitter in the. 
I'm gonna put my Twitter in the chat. So if you want to support my casting career, which I'm really, st which I'm really trying to, you know, commit to, make it my main profession. I'd be grateful for a follow. I don't use Twitter all that much. I don't like social networks that much for that matter. But I can really use the follows because customers actually look at that. As for the tournament's Twitter, it helps us get more teams, get bigger teams into this tournament. And I mean, come on, the next season is gonna come. The next season is gonna come up in about 10 days from now already. So it's not like there's not enough Dota to go around for you guys. It's not like we're not doing the best job we can. And um, shout out to our sponsors, expat.co, who currently got a, got a really big promotion with the code BOUNTYX up to a 100 euro deposit bonus. So if you want to try out betting, if you're new to betting and want to wanna try, you know, putting some money on those games, if you made all the right calls on who won these series, go ahead, there's your chance. Joey C. Try signing off. I do hope you had a great one. And... Tomorrow we got two more games coming up here in the Southeast Asian Cup, if I'm not mistaken. Peace out, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope to see you tomorrow. And, um... Damn, I don't know what to say to the Russians. Um... Davai, davai, vodka, um... Sosia, chui, zayabis. That's about all the, Ru all the Russian I know. Hopefully someone's gonna have... Peace out.